Hi, this is Geert Jan from the NetBeans team. In this screencast, I want to show you how you can expose the data from your Oracle database to the world. So, we imagine we have data in an Oracle database and we want to have other applications access that data. Of course, not all data in Oracle databases or in any databases are relevant to be accessed by other applications. But if you do have data that you would like to expose for others to use, whether internally within your organization or externally, this is the process you would use to do that. So first of all, you need to set up your Oracle database with a NetBeans. And I've gone through this process following this tutorial. And what I now have is the HR database from the Oracle Thin database server available and running inside NetBeans. And it's, it's opened and I can access it. And for example, let's say I have countries data in the HR database um, that I want to expose to other applications. There are other applications out there, whether on the browser in a desktop or the browser on the mobile phone or wherever, that need to access this country's data from the Oracle HR database that you have available on your system. This is the standard way in which you can expose it using RESTful web services. We start by creating a Maven web application and we'll call it um, employee record manager. So here we have employee records, departments, jobs, job history. This is our HR database. Click next, click finish. So someone somewhere out there is going to access the employee record manager, probably internally within our organization, and access the country database, the country table, or the department's table, or the employee's table, and integrate it into their application. How to do this is very simple. We simply say, RESTful web services from database. Now, this is our database. You can see here the HR database and here are the available tables. Um, if you wanted to work with countries, we would select countries and click next or um, let's say we want to work with employees. Now, employees have other relationships with other tables in the HR database. So each of those foreign key relationships are necessary for our employees table to be integrated into the application so the other tables are also included what will happen is that for each of these tables in the database a java class will be created and the java class will be a plain old java class a so-called pojo with getters and setters for each of the properties so the name you can see here there are various properties here id and names and there'll be a getter and setter for for these two columns in the table. And the same is true for the other columns in the other tables. If we had made changes in our database, so we'd added new columns or we'd changed them in some way, we could regenerate these Java classes that are already in our application. But it's more than likely that at some point we'll make a change here and we have our Java code in our application. We can come back and regenerate that Java code, which means that any changes we have made will not be deleted, they will still be there. Um, and that additional columns that we have created will be added into our Java class. So we click next and we say finish. Now what happens is that for each of the columns in our um, each of our tables, getters and setters will be created and fields for each of those columns and for each of the tables in the database, a class will be created. So you can see here that these classes that have been created, the names match the names in our database. And we look inside each of these classes, and the fields that have been created match the fields, so here country ID and country name, that are in our table within the database. And the getters and setters that have been added, and in addition to that, what's been added are um, constraints. So these come from the Bean Validation API, the maximum size, for example, of country names. So these kinds of 
constraints come from our table constraints and also we have named query annotations which come from the Java persistence annotation API which specify that instead of having to type select C from country C from in other words instead of doing SQL queries which we can use CAD completion for and that means we will refer to them more easily as countries.findAll um, we've seen our here as well our countries class in each of our classes is annotated with the entity, entity annotation making the JPA entity mapped to a table in our database and the table in the database is registered inside of the persistence XML file again according to the JPA specification defining the connection to the database as well as the table generation strategy validation strategy and all the entity classes that are in this module are included and handled and controlled by this persistence XML file. And this is what it looks like in source code. Okay, in addition to that, we have a, a REST for resource created for each of the JPA entity classes. So you can see here that these match these. And these are, first of all, EJBs because they have a stateless annotation into the Java bean and secondly they have a path annotation each of these do have that and also there is an application config so these all follow the specification risk for resource specification meaning that the path to our resource for example our country resource is going to be is going to have this on the end of it which is a little bit clunky, so we will change this to countries, giving us access to one specific method because these are all get annotations. So if you pass in country slash one, we will get a find will be done and we will get back country number one. So a country that matches the ID one. So which one will that will be? You can see here AR, that's that country. Instead of that, though, we're going to not pass in anything after countries, which means we will get to the find all, the find all method. You see here that each of the other get annotations provide a path. This one does not. So we want to find all of them. And therefore, we will simply point to countries, which will get us down to find all, since we have not specified any further path after countries so application config will give us web resources and for countries we will not add anything beyond the path annotation on the class to realize that we hop into our properties the context path for the whole application is employee record manager in addition, we type where resources, and then we want to get to the resource of our countries. Click OK. Application is ready. Let's expand it to see the classes that are available. We can jump directly to test the resource URI, or we can deploy the application. We deploy the application and what's going to happen now is that we're deploying and we want to display the result in the embedded browser, not in, the, in an external browser. You can see here we can also deploy to, to the Android device. Um, if I was on the Mac, I could deploy to iOS. What you see here are the countries. Now, um, via this URL, any external application can access these countries. And we can make changes. So you can see here we have XML right now, but maybe you want JSON. So I'll make a small change. And now what is produced by the find all method, in other words, by getting to the countries in the URL, we will get to find all. And what we will get is JSON. So we refresh and immediately we get JSON. So any change we make in the Java class will cause the application to be redeployed automatically without us doing anything. So here we have JSON. 
So you, now you might think, okay, so this is interesting. We have JSON deployed by the application. What can be done with it? So let's create another application that will access that application. Now, before we do that, we need to make sure that the other application can actually access that application. Um, so to do that, we need to add a cross-origin resource sharing filter so that all gets, posts, puts, deletes um, are accessible from other domains. And nothing we need to do except add it. So we've included this. Um, but what's also happened is that in the... So you can see here that the provider annotation is all that's needed. Okay, so access control is given to get posts, puts, deletes from other domains. So here is the other domain. Let's do that. Do, do the other domain. Create a new application. So let's say um, country displayer. So this one is only interested in displaying the countries from the HR database. Say so finish. And let's run that application also inside of the embedded browser. It doesn't show anything very interesting because we don't have very many interesting things to show yet. But now we're going to say we create a RESTful JavaScript client. So this is a client. So we call it countries client, which accesses a specific RESTful resource. In this case, the country re resource. And we add backbone. This is supported here by default. And it provides, we want to provide a country's HTML file. So what does this do? It adds the backbone JavaScript library to the application. It also adds jQuery and underscore JS. So these are added. In addition, we have a backbone JavaScript file. And importantly, it accesses our RESTful resource, exactly the one that we've just been creating. And then it breaks it down. It gets the country ID, it gets the country name, and it displays it in an MVC structure provided by backbone. We also have a HTML file to display this, a template on top of the backbone.js and index as a starting point. So we still have this index here. So let's change that index to countries. So here are the countries. Consumed in the browser embedded inside NetBeans is the restful resource countries that is part of this Maven application. And similarly, you could consume any of the other resources, whether inside of the browser, as we are doing here on the desktop, or you could do so on the mobile phone. So in this way, you can integrate Java EE on the back end with JavaScript on the front end. Finally, you can interact between the browser, whether it is the Chrome browser or the browser inside NetBeans, and tools inside NetBeans. So let's open the navigator and let's deploy the application and look inside. Let's run the application. Go to customers countries and we can click on items here and not see them in the navigator but in the browser DOM. So as items are clicked on in the browser DOM you can see where they are defined in the browser and vice versa. So here I'm clicking and there I'm seeing the related item. So as I hover, I can see where these items are found. In short, what you see here is how you can expose 
data from an Oracle database to be used by other applications. And you also have a development environment for creating the front ends for the applications that you want to create to consume the data that comes from the RESTful resources. Thank you very much and have fun in exposing your Oracle database for usage in other clients.